Good morning, church, and welcome. We give thanks that each of you has gathered for worship this morning. Let us take time now to greet one another, those in our homes and those online, saying hello on the comment wall and sharing the peace of Christ with one another. A special welcome to those joining for the first time. We're so grateful. And if you would like information about ways to get connected, there is a sign-in link in the description of this video where you can introduce yourself, share a comment or prayer request, or just say hi. We'd love to hear from you. In gratitude this morning, we welcome soloist Ryan Brown to worship. And we have the privilege today of gifting our fourth graders with a Bible as a gift from their congregation, and to say thank you to our wonderful Sunday School teachers. And now, as we turn our attention to the prelude, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. join me in the call of worship. God, we know you are with us. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You have showered your love upon all generations since the beginning of time. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Guide us now through this time of worship and into the week ahead. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God.
I invite you to turn to the insert in your online order of worship as we celebrate our mission and common life together. During this season of uncertainty and challenge, we lift up some of our ongoing groups and opportunities to connect with God and one another. Don't miss today's coffee hour Zoom at 11 a.m. Along with your coffee and donuts, we're celebrating Halloween. So wear a costume or bring your favorite Halloween story to share. If you're looking for a way to stay active and connect safely in person, you might enjoy the Sunday morning walking group. Just show up at church at 9 a.m. to walk down to Ocean Boulevard and back. Or check out the Grief and Graces group meeting on Zoom this afternoon at 4 p.m. It's led by Reverend Carey and is a time for connecting in community through sharing and listening to one another. We are also grateful to be able to offer you some time for prayer and quiet reflection in the sanctuary on Wednesdays from noon until 2 p.m. Details about these opportunities and more are in the online order of worship found in the description of this video and are also on the welcome page of our website. And if you're having any technical difficulties getting plugged in, just call the church office during the week. We are here for you. We thank God for these opportunities for fellowship, for worship, and for service. Thanks be to God. Today's scripture reading is Psalm 90 from the Common English Bible. Lord, you have been our help generation after generation. Before the mountains were born, before you created the earth and all that is in it, from forever in the past to forever in the future, you are God. You return people to dust because in your perspective, a thousand years is like yesterday past, like a short period during the night watch. You sweep humans away like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. True, in the morning it thrives, renewed, but come evening it withers, all dried up. Come back to us, Lord. Have compassion for your servants. Fill us full every morning with your faithful love so we can rejoice and celebrate. Make us happy for the same number of years that we saw only trouble. Let your acts and your glory be seen by your children. Let the kindness of the Lord be over us. Make the work of our hands last. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Sundays were church days when I was growing up. We would get ready in the morning, usually with a few tears, a lost shoe, or some sort of meltdown in the getting ready process. My mom, my sister Amy, my great-grandmother Nanny, and myself. My dad, he worked nights at the local newspaper, and so Saturday was a really long night of work. He would be eating his dinner as we were getting ready and eating our breakfast on Sunday mornings. And then as we would get in the car to go to church, he would head to bed in a very quiet house. My sister had the important job on Sunday mornings of pushing Nanny's wheelchair into church as we dropped her off at her Sunday school class. She was one of the founding members of that church, and her group had been together forever. They were called the Hand in Hand class. And my nanny was the secretary. Well, after we dropped nanny off, my mom would walk my sister and me to our classes. I was one of those kids who loved Sunday school. I had great teachers who would bring homemade goodies and treats for us to share. We would sit in a circle and tell about our week. And then came the Bible stories. We would dress up and use our imaginations to learn and act the stories out. 
I loved this because acting them out made the stories feel real and come to life for me. One time we acted out David and Goliath and I got to be Goliath that day and it was really great because I got to look at the story from Goliath's perspective and I really loved that. For me, these memories of the Bible and the women who taught Sunday school are intertwined. Who have been your faith teachers? Maybe in Sunday school or somewhere else along the way. Maybe later in life or an author of a book. Teachers can be our pastor or just a regular person who has a gift for teaching. I imagine we can all think of a few. Have you ever told that person the impact that they had on your faith? Today, we are saying thank you to the Sunday school teachers in our community who make time each week to be with our kids, to teach and guide them, and to share God's love with them. This year, they have had unique challenges with Sunday school. And after a few weeks of sheltering at home and missing Sunday mornings, they called me with an idea. How about we do Sunday school on Zoom, they asked. So we did. We tried it out, and we've been doing it every week since. They gather on Zoom to tell Bible stories, do projects together, and they even do a Faith in Action service activity each month. Our Sunday school teachers have modeled resiliency and faithful steadfastness in the midst of this year. They've modeled this to our children, and we as a community are so grateful to them for their love and their dedication. To be honest, I really admire anyone who teaches anything from the Bible. It's not an easy book. It's the main scripture or sacred writings for us as Christians. But it's also a complicated and not always easy to understand book. It's a source of comfort and something we look to for direction in life. But it's also something we're called to wrestle with, to examine and question. It's not just a book that sits up high out of reach, but it's a book that we can dive into with our hands and our heads and our hearts. Have you ever been confused by or struggled with something you've read in it? Or maybe even deeply disagreed with? My best teachers have helped me to name those places of struggle and explore them, to not hide or be afraid of them. When I was growing up, I came across multiple places in the Bible that spoke about women's roles as wives submitting to their husbands or women being silent in church or not permitted to teach. These troubled me. Up to that point in my life, I had never bumped up against something in the Bible so solidly that felt so wrong. It felt uncomfortable. And my first instinct was to either relegate the Bible as something that had no meaning in my life anymore, 
or just skip over those passages, ignoring them, and keep going. Thankfully, I had some really wonderful teachers in my life who gave me a third option. They helped me to name my questions, and we explored the scripture verses together. They introduced me to the Wesleyan quadrilateral as a tool that United Methodists use to examine and understand scripture by bringing in resources from our tradition, using our reason and our experience alongside the scriptures. In studying the text, I learned a lot about the historical settings of these different books and about the cultures they were written in. And in the end, I grew in my understanding of the Bible and the ways that those texts can be interpreted. I grew in my love for the Bible because it doesn't hold back. It holds within it the complexities of humanity. One of my teachers always told me that God and the Bible can handle any question or concern I bring to it. And to not be afraid to explore those things. Because it is in our struggling and questioning that we dig into our faith and we grow. Back in college, and for a few years after, I was a part-time fitness tech at a women's gym. And one of the things that I learned while working there is the process of building muscles. When you lift weights and work on gaining strength, you are actually tearing the muscles. Then you take time to rest so that the muscles can repair. It is the back and forth process of tearing and resting that allows the muscles to rebuild and grow. And our faith is the same. At some point, the depth of the Bible stories we learn in childhood don't make sense to us anymore. And we need to grow. So we wrestle with the stories to go deeper and learn more. The way we teach a four-year-old the story of creation is not the way we teach it to a 17-year-old or a 54-year-old. They all have very different questions they're bringing to these stories. Just as we grow physically or emotionally, developing and changing how we see ourselves and the world around us, Growing and learning is vital to our faith development. It's not just a one-time thing. This process happens over and over again and again during our life. One of the places we support this growth is through confirmation class in middle school. It's a time for exploring and questioning. And at the end of this process, youth are given the chance to confirm not only their faith, but also their sense of belonging. And if they choose, they become official members of this community. One of my favorite classes to teach during confirmation is the day that we talk about the Bible, because we get to dive deep ask hard questions, and explore faithfully and honestly what we find inside. And we challenge ourselves to learn the historical and cultural context within it. This is often one of those moments for our youth, the moment of muscles tearing and repairing themselves, growth happening and faith maturing. Another place we recognize growing in faith is with our fourth graders. Today we celebrate Emily, Rachel, 
and Lucian, who will be receiving Bibles. When our children are younger, we provide a children's storybook Bible. It's a book that's age appropriate for them. Now as fourth graders, we give them a new Bible because we recognize that they are maturing and ready for this step. To our fourth graders today, I hope you use this book to ask hard questions, to wonder and examine it, to doubt and discover within it, to wrestle with this beautiful and holy book. One of the most important things my teachers and pastors have helped me to learn, and one I hope that I pass on to others, is that God cares for us. God loves us, and we are called to show God's love by caring for one another. That message of love comes through in our psalm reading today. Indeed, God's love has been at work in the world since the beginning of time. Depending on the translation you read, it says it differently. From everlasting to everlasting. From generation to generation. From once upon a time to kingdom come. Yet we hear the same translation, we hear the same message in each of these translations. God's love for us is above and beyond any expanse we can imagine. Nothing out lies outside of God's care. So may we live into that knowledge and truth of God's love for us and the whole world as we go forth this week. And let us respond to God's generous love in the way Jesus teaches us. To love God fully with all of our hearts, our minds, our soul, and our strength. And to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Or as our psalm puts it, let the kindness of the Lord our God be over us. Amen. Indeed, this morning, we share in the joy of giving Bibles to our fourth graders as a gift from our congregation. We've done this for more years than anyone can count. This gift is an expression of our love for you. Emily Dorothy Franklin, Rachel Elizabeth Snyder, and Lucien Fong. And as we share in love for you, 
we also affirm our trust in God to keep our faith alive by raising up generation upon generation far into the future. This morning we also express our deepest gratitude to our Sunday School teachers who so faithfully, generously, and joyfully dedicate themselves to nurturing and raising up these new generations of faith. Today we thank Jamie Jones, Sandra Jones, Dot Plukas, Emily Plukas, Megan Crawford, Virginia Pelton, and Janet Bogle. In an attitude of prayer, let us join together now in this litany of blessing. Storytelling God, as you speak to us through your scriptures, we are gathered between the covers of your glory and find our story in your story. Bless our fourth graders as they receive a Bible as a gift from our congregation. May they cherish it as their own, learn it by heart, and thus always grow in faith and love. Inscribing God, the stories of the scriptures belong to us all, and its words speak to us all. They tell us who we are. They tell us that we belong to one another. They point us to new discoveries and glimpses of who we might become. Bless our Sunday school teachers who so generously share of themselves with the children and families of our congregation teaching and guiding them in your ways. Give them calm strength and patient wisdom. May they find joy and fulfillment as they lead us all in your paths of wisdom and truth. Inspiring God, you have given us your scriptures for teaching and for learning, to ground us in faith and righteousness, and to build us up in service to you and your world. May we continue to learn together, growing in love for your word and your children in every place. Pour out your blessings upon us all this day as we join with our fourth graders and our Sunday school teachers as students and disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
With joy in our hearts, we take time today to practice gratitude and generosity by offering our gifts. It is through your giving that we are able to continue our ministries, offering opportunities for worship and connection, serving our neighbors and sharing our resources. Your support makes a difference. You can mail your gift to the church or drop it off at our office any day of the week. You can also give online. You'll find a link to our secure giving page in the description of this video. We are grateful for each of you, and we thank you for your generous support. Please join me in the unison prayer of dedication. Almighty God, 
your son has shown us how to love one another. We offer these gifts to you. May our love for you overflow into joyous service and be a healing witness to our neighbors through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you go forth, may God's love surround you, uphold you, and empower you to be sources of love in our world. Amen. <laughs>